Hi, I'm Bill Reed, the Packaging Business Development Manager for Branson Ultrasonics, an Emerson brand. Thanks for your interest in our assembly solutions today. Over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about how ultrasonic sealing works. We're going to compare it to the more commonly used thermal or heated bar technology, and we're going to also discuss especially how well-suited ultrasonic energy is for today's bio-based materials. Ultrasonic welders come in many different configurations. This is a benchtop welder. This is the type of machine many of our customers will use in their applications lab. This is where a lot of the development is done, determining material compatibility, weldability, strength that can be achieved in a seal, and also the best method to weld or to seal in. For instance, weld by energy generally is much more accurate than welding by time. So customers will use a benchtop machine to determine the practicality of the application, but then how best to apply the parameters in full-blown automation. In addition to benchtop welders, many customers will use handheld ultrasonic welders. That makes access to very difficult seal locations even easier. For instance, clamshell packaging and this sort of thing. Let's discuss a little bit more about how ultrasonic welding works. The thing to really keep in mind is that ultrasonic welding, the tooling is not heated, as in thermal or heated tooling. It resonates at a very, very high frequency, producing a very defined frictional activity at the face of what we call the horn, and some call this a sonotrode. Branson offers welding equipment at multiple frequencies. You can see there's a 40 kilohertz tooling stack, we call this the stack, a 30 kilohertz stack, and in this case, in the machine, is a 20 kilohertz tooling stack. 20 kilohertz, or 20,000 cycles per second, is the frequency that this tooling literally vibrates at. The amount it vibrates or displaces each one of those 20,000 cycles per second is called amplitude, and this is adjustable, very fine increments. In a sense, amplitude is the heating potential of ultrasonics. More amplitude, more potential heat can be generated. Less amplitude, of course, less potential heating. The frequency is matched or aligned to the application, where 40 kilohertz is a very finely defined frictional activity for very delicate uh, sealing surfaces. 20 kilohertz is a little more aggressive and can also uh, manage larger seal areas. The principle of how we get this very defined activity at the face of a horn is relatively simple, or we're going to keep it simple. This is a 40 kilohertz ultrasonic stack. It's comprised of the converter, some call it the transducer, the booster, and the horn, or some call this, again, the sonotrode. The way we generate this very defined frictional activity is through the power supply, either off of 120 or 240 hertz, feeding the frequency, in this case, 40 kilohertz, through an RF cable to the converter. The converter does just that. It converts electrical energy into mechanical movement. So the converter is literally resonating at 40,000 cycles per second. The booster, which is strictly a mechanical tool, can increase or decrease the amplitude, the physical movement coming off of the face of that converter sort of like a gear in a transmission. The horn, of course, has to be machined to the configuration of the application. There are circular horns, rectangular horns, square horns. The horn shape, again, must align with the application, but its mass, its configuration, can also increase or decrease the amplitude. These elements are all tuned to operate at the resonant frequency. Again, in this case, 40 kilohertz. One of the distinct advantages of ultrasonic sealing over thermal or heated bar tooling is the ability to adjust this amplitude to precisely the amount of frictional activity needed to seal the product without degrading it, which is a significant challenge with bio-based materials. So the ultrasonic stack is uh, very clearly defined to match the application from that contact side. But on the receiving or fixtured side, anvils can be configured in many different configurations, similar to heated bar tooling. So many customers will want the thinnest seal surface possible to save material. 
Some will prefer a serration or a neural. Uh, these patterns are uh, very commonly used in both technologies, ultrasonics or thermobar tooling. So my point is the lower fixturing is not unique to ultrasonics as much as packaging applications. The stand welder is generally a pneumatic press. In more sophisticated applications, Branson offers a servo-driven press for very precise control. And the operator uses dual anti-tie-down palm buttons and fixturing that may be very crude initially in some applications to pretty sophisticated pre-production fixturing. Ultrasonics offers very tightly controlled parameters. This is where we determine the optimum weld mode, the force we're going to use, the sealing configuration, and this will all be brought in, generally speaking, into production parameters. So the lab machine is very important. This is also where we determine uh, and establish parameters, operating ranges that we expect this machine to repeat every cycle, which is another distinct advantage over thermal tooling, where you have a temperature setting, a time, and maybe reasonable force control. Ultrasonics offers this very sophisticated well by energy approach with high low parameter these ranges that if you don't uh, achieve a seal within that you get a latchable alarm function to reduce quality concerns down the line. What we learned from the initial testing with the benchtop welder at some point we have to bring to production. Those are key parameters that we want to replicate in production. With moderate volume, the benchtop welder may be just fine to implement into production. But in many cases, packaging is a high volume, high speed proposition. The Branson welding componentry looks very different for installation into automation. These are two DCX power supplies. This is the family model, the DCX, and it comes in different operating frequencies, 20, 30, 40 kilohertz, and different wattages based on the seal area and the horn configuration and so forth. They're in vertical or horizontal configurations. They're generally mounted in an electrical enclosure in a rack arrangement. They're, it's not unusual to see five, 10, you know, 20 of these units in a high volume assembly system. They are communicating with the PLC. This is the machine controller. The signals and the start stop and the potential alarm generation is all provided by these units. So it's key data acquisition. So we have controlling parameters that we establish, especially based from our initial testing, that we don't want to violate in any cycle. And if we don't reach those controlled parameters, these machines will generate a latchable alarm. So this prevents quality trouble getting into and through production. In automation, the tooling can also look very different, where the machine builder will determine what is the ideal actuation method could be pneumatic or even servo controlled. Our tooling offering looks very different at that point. I wanted to show you a very interesting, what we call Balin technology tool stack. In this case, we have a single 30 kilohertz horn driven by two converters, which have a very simple uh, mounting arrangement for the machine builder to uh, introduce. And the purpose of two converters driving one horn, this is a pretty good sized horn for 30 kilohertz, is that this would be a high power requirement application with the necessity to have very even amplitude across the face of this horn. Speaking again of amplitude control, as it relates and compares to thermal sealing technology, the ultrasonic energy is so pure and the energy uh, control is so high that in many applications, the seal width can be much narrower with ultrasonics than heated tooling. This is material savings. And it's not unusual to have a 30 to 50% reduction in the width of the seal surface because of the control and consistency of ultrasonics. Customers in our packaging segment today are under intense pressure to reduce waste. Within that segment, manufacturers of single-use coffee and tea capsules are under the most scrutiny. Something like 60 billion of these were consumed last year, most of which ended up in landfills. This customer has a very unique design in as much as using a filter screen component which is welded to this white outer ring. Traditional heat sealing was the method of choice initially. 
Bio-based materials have a narrow processing window. Overheating and degradation is a very common problem with conventional heat sealing. That's exactly what happened with this one. Leak paths were created and it was unacceptable. Additionally, there were cycle time challenges using conventional heated tooling. Customer came to us and asked if ultrasonic sealing would be a, a practical solution. We evaluated it in our lab. We determined that 20 kilohertz was the best operating frequency. The testing was very successful. With the very precise amplitude control, we determined the best processing parameters to achieve the weld strength without the degradation. So this was a success. Nature wins because of the customer's innovation using these materials that are bio-based, biodegradable, and compostable as it turns out. Ultrasonics was also the success, preventing degradation and achieving the customer specifications. This video shows Branson components actually installed in a fully automated assembly line for pouches. This high speed pouch fill station takes the material off of the roll, orients it, and ultimately produces a pair of pouches filled simultaneously with a cheese spread. You will see two ultrasonic 20 kilohertz welders positioned horizontally side by side and although you won't see them moving in an actuation, the anvil that is hidden is moving, compressing the pouch against the horn. As you can see from the conveyor and from some of the guarding, cheese spread seems to be everywhere. So it's highly likely that the seal surface is contaminated with this cheese spread. Due to the uniqueness of ultrasonic energy, it displaces it before the seal occurs, assuring a high quality seal. Ultrasonic sealing is a very refined process, perfect for today's bio-based materials and the challenges they present, and for customers whose goals include reduced material usage and cut energy costs. Remember, amplitude is key. This very defined activity, which is determined through that application testing, is delivered to the product consistently cycle after cycle without the material degradation and achieving the weld quality results. Energy, control, data acquisition, latchable alarm functions, these are all far more advanced features that today's customers insist on.